Over the last decade, it's highly likely your job has been affected by digitalization one way or another, no matter what sector you're in. Assigning a shipper's freight to the right carrier is something that logistics companies still mostly conduct manually with the use of spreadsheets and phone calls. However, could those spreadsheets and Rolodexes become a thing of the past? Over the course of this video, we're going to dive into how digitalization will affect freight networks, but in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with the world of trucking, and let's get into it. Many industry veterans fear that the technological revolution happening will eradicate jobs and the value of human relationships, something I typically agree with them on, as the world becomes more and more automated, and we spend more and more time communicating to each other through digital spaces rather than physical. That being said, the director of freight market intelligence at Freight Waves, Zach Strickland, sees it differently. Quote, technology rarely eliminates the need for human capital, and more often increases the efficiency of it. Looking at the US economy over the past 30 years is a perfect example of this. Technology has improved vastly and jobs have increased. However, I'd counter that by pointing out while jobs have increased, worker income has hardly reacted in a similar manner. If you need any assurances that things don't always play out how they're supposed to, technology Technological advancements should decrease the cost of doing business and therefore goods themselves, but just hit up your local grocery store and gas station and tell me how that technology is making your life easier and cheaper. Another aspect to technology is we often create shortcuts to alleviate hassles. For instance, we created email, so you'd no longer have to write a letter by hand, walk or drive to the post office and then pay for a stamp. We thought by digitalizing the process it would save us time, but what happened was, instead of sending a few letters a week at max, we now send hundreds or even thousands of messages a day. So did we really alleviate the effort, or did we just rev up the treadmill? But despite my hesitancy to believe that technological advancements always result in problems solved without creating others, let's take a look at how these digital freight markets operate. According to a report done by Convoy, one of the leading companies in the digital freight space, roughly 35% of total miles driven on any given run are empty. At the same time, drivers can spend hours waiting at docks and delivery destinations due to poor scheduling. These inefficiencies drive costs higher for carriers, which means the expense gets passed on to the shippers and ultimately to the consumer. Of all the problems in trucking, poor scheduling and route management remains one of the biggest problems that traditional freight management can cause. By making the shift to digital freight networks and implementations, a lot of industry experts are hoping to save that time and money from end to end. Whether human, digital, or a combination of both, shippers rely on middlemen to locate capacity for their freight, a system that has been proven faulty with the unprecedented disruptions due to the pandemic. This is something that caught the eye of Gartner, who published a report with the aim of providing research for supply chain technology leaders so they can identify new digital freight models and other transportation technologies, which will hopefully provide real-time capacity and pricing for domestic freight. Gartner's proposed solutions for these inefficiencies highlighted by COVID is, quote, an open, fully connected marketplace that uses machine learning, automation, and other software services to efficiently connect shippers with carriers. The idea is that through machine learning, or in other words, artificial intelligence, the freight network will automatically evaluate billions of different possible load combinations to match shipments with the right carriers, while also consolidating shipments, which is assumed will provide a better experience for both shippers and and carriers alike. One of the most common acronyms you'll hear in the freight shipping market is RFP, which is short for Request for Proposal, or an RFQ, which means Request for Quotation. For decades, RFPs have been the cornerstone of finding and agreeing on the freight process. Yet, they take months to complete and can cost millions in operational overhead. While demand for freight surged during COVID-19, shippers couldn't rely on those primary contracts and needed both reliable backup and spot options, which are essentially used to find rates on last-minute shipments. While the majority of a shipper's freight is under contract with selected carriers, when demand increases and or capacity is tight, carriers often reject those contracted loads in favor of higher rates on the spot market. So in other words, they bail on old promises because there is more dough to be made elsewhere. This can often leave shippers in trouble, forcing them to scramble to secure capacity on the spot market and pay higher rates, which ends up trickling down and costing us all more money at whatever stores we frequent. Most recently, the pandemic caused the rejection rate to spike over 26%. Some companies, such as the Home Depot, found alternative to contract rates by using Convoy's guaranteed primary program. Convoy's software predicts pricing with the use of an algorithm to provide shippers with predicted rates. 
This program also eliminates the need to manage rejected tenders, which in turn decreases operational cost and shippers are insured capacity in tight markets, while simultaneously reaping the benefits of lower rates in a soft market. Shippers can also leverage data insights from these digital freight networks since they collect a great deal of data, factoring in millions of pickups and deliveries. By creating reports from that data, shippers will be able to reveal what's impacting their efficiency and driving up the costs across supply chains. Historically, shippers tend to gravitate towards asset-based carriers. This means carriers who own their own equipment, for instance, trucks, warehouses, and tools. They also typically provide a variety of services, including warehouse space, distribution services, and value-added options. Another large reason these carriers are typically popular with shippers is for their reliability and pricing consistency. However, the industry is operated as a zero-sum game, where when one party wins, the other team inherently loses, because when capacity is tight, carriers have the pricing power over shippers, and as capacity increases, that power shifts back to shippers. These constant ups and downs make it difficult for shippers to secure reliable capacity and pricing. Because of the automated brokering process between shippers and carriers that digital freight networks use, they are able to adapt to these market changes. According to Gartner's report, quote, digital freight networks are helping shippers overcome COVID-19 challenges by delivering the reliability of an asset-based carrier and the flexibility of a broker. Another aspect is that carriers have historically had to maintain relationships with multiple brokers for the ability to gain visibility of available loads. But that visibility was always limited due to the extremely low number of relationships our monkey brain is able to maintain at any given time. Digital freight networks also disrupt this historical framework and sort of democratize the process by providing access to all freight for all carriers. These digital networks also only become more efficient and accurate as more carriers and shippers join the network. A digital freight network is similar to social networks in the sense that as more parties join, the benefits increase. As more shippers join, carriers are able to access more load options and experience fewer empty miles and shorter dwell times, which allows carriers to optimize their revenue. As more carriers join, capacity increases and shippers reap the benefits of better levels of service coupled with lower costs. The typical battle for carriers is trying to reduce their non-revenue movements, which if fixed, will lower their costs and in turn influence their rates to shippers. By making the process of matching loads and trucks automated, digital freight networks can also greatly reduce the labor costs and the time those manual efforts require. This increased efficiency once again could help alleviate prices while also helping carriers earn more. Seeing as the trucking industry is increasingly becoming a prevalent career choice for people immigrating to North America, the digitalization can help bridge the gap for those who may not have broker relationships and may feel uncomfortable negotiating prices over the phone for every single load if English isn't their first language. They'd essentially have a level playing field when it comes to accessing shipments and bidding on loads with the help of an app. According to a representative with Convoy, the digital freight network mentioned earlier, quote, we can create better experience for shippers in terms of cost and quality as well as for carriers in terms of access to consistent, reliable freight to keep their trucks full. Because a digital freight network automates the challenging and time-consuming tasks of pricing, matching, and scheduling, we can reserve our customer service team to focus on the truly complex, unique customer problems that drive more return for their business. However, this isn't an approach shared by all freight networks. Some focus on applying a digital face or an app of sorts to the traditional process, while others have been using machine learning or artificial intelligence to provide dynamic pricing and guaranteed pricing as well as sustainability solutions. But as to what format the industry will get behind is unknown at this moment. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Will the digitalization of freight networks be positive for both carriers and shippers alike? If there are any aspects of this innovation that has drivers worried, let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.